Uh, this is what 5 a.m. feels like. So glad that you guys are here. We're super excited for a great trip. You guys are going to have a lot of fun. I know a lot of you guys, it's the first time. Some of you guys, you've been before. But we have a lot of uh, great things planned for the next few days. So we want to go over a few just quick announcements for um, the ride down to the airport and then once we get to the airport. I'm Mr. Bartz. And I'm Mrs. Bartz and we're serving in Guatemala. The mission trip is a long-standing tradition at King's for the last seven years. We've been partnering with Hope Project International. Uh, Than and Megan Grafham are the mission partners that we support, and they're actually families at TKA, and uh, we just, we love partnering with them because they work in Guatemala and Nicaragua and some other countries uh, building homes for families in need. Uh, and so TKA has partnered with them for the last several years. Uh, we've built over 50 homes uh, over the last several years with Hope Project. And it's really just an opportunity for students to uh, get involved, to serve, be a part of something bigger outside of themselves. And so um, we enjoy seeing students serve, get outside of their comfort zone. Um, and it's just a really great opportunity to see how God's mission is beyond just our backyard, but it's global really. We just well, we made it to school at 5 a.m. So it looks a little different at 5 a.m. But everybody's loaded up. We're about to pull out. Uh, we're and going to the far. airport. We're going to get on this flight and get to Guatemala. Here we go. All right. Let's do it. All right, let's get back to the breaking news. It's impacting flights all across the country this morning as the FAA reported a nationwide system failure. Fox Live's Bob Barnard has been live at Reagan National Airport with how it's impacting travelers. And Bob, we've gotten a couple of updates from the FAA. What do we know? They're saying that uh, they're bringing their computer system online. It's, it's a nationwide computer system that allows pilots to kind of know about real-time conflicts in the air, any potential dangers. It's a safety issue. So that's why the FAA grounded all flights overnight, and it apparently is still in place. So what just happened? Our flight got canceled. So what are we going to do now? We don't know yet. <laughs> but we'll <laughs> figure know. it out, right? Yep. There's 61 of us, and we got canceled. So right now we're just having a party by the Lego store with about 150 other people waiting to get our uh, our flight rebooked. And I'm on hold for about an hour and a half before American will call me back. So I'm gonna finish my sandwich. You guys finish it? Almost. Solid eleven dollars, right? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Our flight was first delayed and then canceled and then reinstated. So we moved from different gates to not having a flight to then having a flight. But all in all, we made it. We're here. It took a little bit to get here, but I think the students are super excited for a couple great days. All right guys, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of the lay of the land and where we're staying, and some kind of rules and things to look out for. Then we'll tell you exactly what's going on tomorrow morning, and then we're gonna attend you to your room so you can get comfortable, get settled in, and get to sleep, okay? We are Than and Megan Grafham from Hope Project International, and Hope Project helps children and families all around the world in the areas of nutrition, education, shelter, and spiritual development. And just one of the countries that we serve kids in is Guatemala. And so we've been involved with King's um, through service projects for students for seven years. And uh, we've really loved our partnership with the school as we help children around the world. So grab and go? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alright guys, we're going to unload everything in the back of this truck, including the wood on top. So if you want to partner up in grabbing a ladder or a door, we got to bring everything in the back plus the wood. So, good call. Breakdown of what we do pretty much the first day. We take the day traveling and have the kids settle in. And then we go straight into two full days of building. It's pretty much like nine to five. And we break up into four different teams. And each team builds two houses. So together, the King's Academy with Hope Project builds eight houses per trip.
great too. This is going to be such a cool experience. And it's the first time we've ever done this. Actually, no. It's no, not my first okay. time. <laughs> I was here last year. Oh, so she was. I was yes. How is it? Is it different from last year? Um, I would say, yeah, because, I mean, there's like double the amount of people. Mm -hmm. And like now we're using wood. And so last year we used all metal. And now we have like an actual door and actual windows as opposed to last year. That's yeah. cool. And this view is cool too. Like, oh, yeah. We're all kind of by ourselves. Yes. Now well, we are making food bags for each one of the families that we're building houses for. We're going to start them off with a starter grocery bag. So we're putting things in there like, um, as you can see, <laughs> as you can see, we are putting in here some different items, some cucumbers and onions and potatoes and beans and rice and all kinds of things for the families for their groceries. We like basically spent like the entire day together, but like we were like with like the little boy and the baby and we were just like there were only a few like kids but it was so fun we made the most of it and we tried helping with building but you know yeah <laughs> so explain can you explain the building process like what was all going on well like first like they already had the foundation like done and we just had to like do the walls with the metal sheets and the wood things yeah. Lots of drilling and, uh, and hammering, you know? Yeah. <laughs> My day was really good. I had a lot of fun playing with like all the kids and going to all four sites and like seeing all the families. And it was a little hot today, but other than that, my day was like really good. So yeah, we, we built the house yesterday and uh, first time, so we were still getting our feet under our uh, under under ourselves and uh, and so coming into today we were so much more confident with building the house um, and so we got to lunch and we just felt so confident with all that we've gotten done so it's been great so far. Pretty like you're pretty good at building like you feel confident getting into the building process or are you kind of like uh. I'm unsure about it or what? Uh, I was kind of eh, because I've never used a drill or anything like that before. But now I finally know how to use a drill and like put up the tin. So I'm actually really proud of myself that I got to do this. So the process is pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it. So pretty much we arrive to the sites. The lumber and the metal sheets are here and everything's ready for us. And uh, Students get on their glasses, they get on their gloves, and we pretty much divide and conquer. So some students will have drills and they'll start working on the drill work, and then some will get hammers, some will be passing equipment to each other. Um, everyone just kind of takes a roll, and then what we do is we make sure the foundation is stable, and once we get the foundation set, then we start building the walls. So we'll put the three walls up, and then at that point we start slowly piecing the roof together as we're also putting up the fourth wall. And then we have a couple people literally on the roof um, and putting it together. And then we do all of like the final process, like the trimming, the corners. We make uh, cutouts for the windows and the door. And then we make sure we install the door and all the windows and put the corners on the house. And that's it, you got yourself a house. So ready to go on day two. So I would say something that surprised me is just how joyful all the kids are, even in like the midst of situations that for us seem like really unpleasant or just something that we're really not accustomed to, but they can still find like joy in everything, even though they don't know any different. So I thought that was like a, diff a unique perspective to see. Oh, all right. you can hear me? Yeah. Oh. So, Okay. day two. Day two. How's your day going? My day is going pretty good. We were a lot faster at building than yesterday, so yeah. So I heard it was your birthday yesterday. Oh, yes, yes it was. How was your birthday in Guatemala? My birthday was pretty great. Um, it was great to just build like houses and help other people and like spending it in a foreign country is, is pretty fun. So it's, it's your second time, second birthday in a row I guess, in Guatemala. 
Um, how is that? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Or I like it a lot because normally my birthday is grouped in with Christmas, so it's not very fun, but getting to spend it in a foreign country, like helping other people, is just a lot of fun. We're pretty good. We're here in uh, Casa Chile. Why is it called Casa Chile? So it's a nice uh, chili bush on the side of the house. We ate it. We loved it. So where's the wood? Hold up. There it is. Casa Chile. We also signed it. Would you say, what was the best part about today so far? You know, I think the team building we get here, working with everyone, meeting new people. Like Abuelito. I wish you all could meet Abuelito. Hey guys, so we're at the Blue Team build site and I'm Libby and that's the house we're building. We've been working on it all day and being eaten by a tree. And we just put the windows in and the guys are working on the roof and because the roof is like hard, we're playing with the kids and they're super nice and fun and Miss Gonzalez is making fun of my Spanish. But we're building with these little blocks and there's a little baby in there and she's super cute and her name is Daniela and she's going to live in the house and we're so excited because she's going to have a clean floor and stuff and it's going to raise her life expectancy and she's going to get to grow up and be healthy and it's going to be so good for her and so we're so excited to get to play with her and meet her and build a house and so yeah, we're hanging out here. So right now we're going to dedicate the houses to both of the families and we're going to give them a little plaque and we're going to give them a Bible and some food and we're going to make them feel welcome and let them know that the Lord loves them. That's why they got a house today. Ah, very nice food. Once the students finish building the homes, uh, what we really like to do and one of the best parts is actually dedicating the home to the family. And so on Saturday, after, we've done, after we're done building the homes, each team will go to their job site where they finish the house. Uh, we'll meet with the family and we'll pray with the family. We'll dedicate the home to them. We'll give them a bag of groceries and we present them with a little plaque. And on the back of it, it has Romans 15, 13. And it's really just a prayer over that home, that it'll be a place of rest, that it'll be a place of health where they can raise their family. And really it's a reminder that every time they look at that home, it's a reminder of how God provides for us and how He hears our prayers. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what we want to emphasize in the dedications, that it's not a gift from the King's Academy, it's not a gift from Hope Project International, it's a gift from God to their family. And there's so many times in those dedications where families will just uh, tell us about how this has been an answered prayer that they've been praying for many years to have a home that they can live in that can extend their life expectancy of their young children. Um, and so a part of the home, there's a kitchen that's also attached that we provide them with a brand new stove. And so all of the statistics that show just how that drastically improves the quality of life for them, it's such a special time with the family as we get to present not just the hard work what the students did, but also just to kind of give them that full picture of like, this isn't about us, it's not about what we can do, it's about what the Lord has provided for them. And so that's always just a special, sacred time with the family. It's been so fun. Um, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be here, and it's just so heartwarming and enlightening to um, see s such joy out of people who have so little. Um, it's really incredible. Sí, que Dios lo bendiga siempre y que derrame muchas bendiciones en su hogar y la Muchas gracias, muchas gracias. Um, she wants to just make sure she expresses the fact that um, that she feels God would bless everybody in, that's been a part of this project and that God would bless our families as well. And although we like to work hard, we also want the students to have fun. So we also have a day where we take them to Antigua and we shop in the marketplace and they can negotiate with all the sellers there and they can sightsee around Antigua and hang out with their friends and just have a good time as well.
been really impressed with the group of students we have on this trip. They have jumped right in, taken initiative, they go where they're told, when they're told, um, and we truly believe that they're a group of world changers. Um, I, we always try to remind them of the magnitude of what they're doing here and the importance of it and just encourage them in the way that they're loving the people of Guatemala, the way that they're jumping right into the building days and doing a great job with that as well with the physical labor piece. So we've just been really grateful to be able to watch them learn and, and jump right in. So it's been an awesome group and we're so proud of them. Yeah, it's always so neat to see students just trying new things. Some of, some of our students have never used a drill before or picked up a hammer. And so to see them using it for the first time, but also not just using it, but, but using it to build a home, it's just so neat. And I know at our job site there have been some students that were like, where is this going to go and how is this going to look? And then when they step back and look at the end of the day and they see a home completed, it's just so cool to see the look on their faces. So it's, it's neat to see how they've grown and matured in such a short span of time because I enjoyed passing the wood yesterday, but I also enjoyed the drill work because I thought the drill work was fun and I really liked hammering the stuff and just kind of laying the foundation of the house. That's what I really enjoyed yesterday. What has surprised you about today or the trip so far? Anything? Um, I didn't realize how like in poverty they were and how like they lived really. Like people have told me from past years like how it was, but I don't think I really it really registered in my head what it really looked like. I, I liked it when, I just liked the building. Um, I liked bonding with my friends and, well, making new friends, bonding with my teammates. Um, it's not a group that I normally am interacting with on a daily basis, so it's really nice to get together and work on a project and get it done. <laughs> to come to a place that's so different from where we live, I think one, just kids seeing um, kind of how people live and how blessed we are at home. And two, also learning how to do things, because I think some kids are nervous to grab a tool and start building, but like once they do, they realize how much fun it is. And like now, day two, everyone's been grabbing tools, everyone's been trying to build the house because they're not scared to do it anymore, and they're not scared of messing up or not getting the nail in on the first try. What's been your uh, favorite thing so far about the trip? Um, giving the kids oranges. Like seeing how happy they are when you like give them a pair of shoes and just even a slice of orange, like it's pretty fun. I, I would recommend the trips to people because some people, since we live in America, it's just like we have a different point of view and stuff, so we don't really see how other people live and how much different it is. And it's just like people need a different perspective sometimes. Yeah, I agree. And also, I would definitely recommend the trip because like um, we, it's like a culture shock, but in a good way. Like we always need like a little bit of something different, you know. And it gets you like out of your box, like meeting yeah. new people. Even if, like me, I I know Spanish, but like other people, they don't know the language and they still try to like interact with the kids. Yeah. And it's just like, it makes you come out of your box a little bit. Yeah, and getting to know like people that you like go to school with, but you don't really talk to that much because you're like in groups, but like, it's cool getting to know like different people and making new friends. Yeah. Me and like all of my other classmates, I really hope that we just leave this with a new like like kind of humbled and a new like gratitude for what we've been given and how much God has blessed us and also an appreciation that he can work in everyone's lives no matter the circumstance whether you have concrete floors, air conditioning, plumbing like no matter what he is with you always. Anything you wanted the people who watch us to know about this trip, I, anything it could be about the homes we visited or the ladies and kids, or just like you should go on Guatemala trip. Like, what would you say? What do you want people to know? Um, mine would actually be what Miss Gay told us this morning, which is just be comfortable in the un uncomfortable, and you will find the coolest of things. Like, I think that goes with this trip because this trip is actually amazing. And in being comfortable in uncomfortable situations, I got to see the way God was going to work through me and everyone who was on our trip, and just everyone was so much more present because we weren't standing off. So just being comfortable without having our phones and without having a way to be off and just being comfortable in situations that we aren't normally used to, I think we found lots of joy and relationships that we wouldn't have found. Yeah. It's very life changing, like just like hang out with these kids and like it's easier when you like act like they're just like normal, like they're not like, they're still kids, like they want to hang out, they want to laugh, they want to have fun. And like, it's just like really fun to hang out with them and get to know them better. And that's like, just get to know the kids and then you'll be more comfortable doing all the work and the 
drilling and the people that are like instructing us are really kind and nice and they really are like really patient in <laughs> how bad you are at drilling which is fine so you can just learn and make mistakes it's okay yeah. so my hope for students is always that kind of these trips will be a moment that marks their life from this point forward uh, that they get home and they're thinking differently they're acting differently they're responding uh, to what's going on around them differently all in better ways yeah. that they're looking at the world yeah. through a brighter lens and, and they can have this experience to look back to and say you know I know that I have value I know I can add value to the world and they can move forward just looking for ways to continue to change the world our biggest hope for the mission trip and one of the main reasons why we like doing the mission trip at, at TKA is that we really want to expose the students to uh, how God has brought all of us together to join him in his mission. So what we always say is when we show up to the job site or to wherever we're building or with families, we're not bringing God's presence with us. God's already there. And so we're just joining him in his great work that what he's doing around the world is already happening. And one of the beauties of the scriptures is how God invites us to be a part of that. Um, that he doesn't just do it on his own, but he wants us to be a part of that, of that great work. And so it's cool to see students take that up and want to be part of that work. And so uh, our hope for the mission trip overall is that students obviously get involved, um, but there's more than one ways you can get involved. Whether you're here in Guatemala serving, building homes, playing with kids, or whether it's raising money during homecoming week to provide the homes for the families, whether it's praying for the team, whatever it looks like, there's so many different ways that you can actually participate in the mission trip. And that's also the reason why I love it is that it's not just about coming here physically, but it's also about raising funds and supporting Hope Project International and praying for these families. Uh, so there's just so many different ways that students can be a part of it and just be a part of something bigger than themselves. This morning we were talking about just how can you continue to serve others even when these students go back home. And so our encouragement to students at King's is that, look, this trip teaches you uh, how to just be a servant and how to take things, take the focus off of yourself sometimes and just start serving others. And that will begin to form and shape you as you begin to just interact with your friends and classmates and anybody else uh, that you come in contact with. Our hope for the students too is really that they would just be exposed to another culture and that that would allow them to see the depths of God's love um, for people all over the world and not just where they're from. So it's a really great opportunity for them to maybe get outside their comfort zone, to learn, to grow, and just really love on people that look different than them or talk different than them.